I'm Harvey Lowe. I'd like to tell you what I know of my uncle who served in the 9th Battalion in the First World War. He was my mother's brother. He was born at Empire Vale in New South Wales and uh, signed up, of course, with the troops and went over. Well, it was a patriotic thing. Australia was British. British, we will fight for Britain, and that's it. Uh, and also, when you're 20, you can't get killed. But it does happen. <laughs> This would have been the kind of reading material that he uh, would have uh, read, boy's own paper. I had a, quite a few of these, but they were all in issues of 12, uh, bound together. But this was, would have been the last one he received, and interesting enough, it shows a bugler on the horse. <laughs> he knew a bit of music, and probably when he went over there, they said, anyone know anything about music? And he might have been silly enough to volunteer, I know something. Bang, and they trained him. He was uh, 70, or probably just turned 18. I think he had to be 18. Uh, so he spent two years and then he was killed. Uh, my mother loved him, of course, because younger brother. When he first arrived in Salisbury, they had a contest, a bugle uh, playing contest between Canada the United Kingdom and Australia, and he won the, the bugle contest, which is a bit of a pat on the back for Australia. He was actually wounded two times and sent back to England to be um, nursed back to health, and he stayed with a family called Smith uh, on both occasions, and after he died, Marjorie Smith uh, sent a lot of his things back to Australia, and she continued to um, correspond with the family for a number of years after that. He died at Abbeville in France on the 13th of the 11th, 1918, which of course is just two days after the armistice. The cause of death in one place said World War I, <laughs> but he actually died of pneumonia. He'd, had, he'd been gassed and uh, the cause of death is pneumonia, but I think it was actually Spanish flu. Spanish flu hit the world in October 1918, disappeared four months later, 40 million people killed. That Spanish flu, if you can get hold of a book called The Spanish Lady, 5,600 troops on both sides in the First World War in the trenches died in one night from Spanish flu. And they still don't know what it was because they dug up the bodies from the permafrost just a couple of years ago. They don't know what it was. And after he died, Marjorie Smith uh, sent a lot of his things back to Australia. I have some of his possessions here. For instance, he probably learned to his music on these tin whistles. He was very keen on collecting cigarette cards, so for instance, we have all the different ships that the British had at that time. He also had stereoscopic slides. Uh, some of these from Australia. Some are shows, there's a couple of pictures of cows, believe it or not. Oh, they're cigarette cards. Capstan cigarette. He was still collecting things over there. Uh, he continued to collect cigarette cards. Everyone smoked. So they encourage them to smoke uh, more by giving them cigarette cards. Now, quite a few of these he collected himself, and a lot of these buildings no longer exist, but after he died, Marjorie kept collecting cards so that uh, they're not all from him. She also sent over a hand grenade. It's been deloused, you can see right through it, from the First World War. You wouldn't get it through the post today, would you? <laughs> and he collected postcards. This is one of the first tanks to go into action. 
Stark terror struck into the hearts of the German troops on the Somme in 1916 when out of the mist, huge metal monsters sending out a stream of death appeared from the British side, lumbering on as though nothing could stop them. Passed over trenches as though they did not exist, tanks had arrived. These great land ships soon made their presence felt. They were 26 feet long, 8 feet wide, weighed 27 tonnes and were equipped with 150 horsepower engines which gave them a speed of 5 miles per hour. <laughs> this is the, the little insignia made of silver to show that he was actually a bugler and he wore that on the lapel of his uniform. My uncle, he died at age 20. Now, I had a cousin uh, shot down by the Germans. They put him up against a, a fence and shot him, 20. Uh, my school teacher had his head chopped off, 20. I lost two brothers at 20, one in Korea and one from pneumonia. Uh, Teddy Larch across the road died at 20. When I got to 20, I'll tell you what, I was back and I told my brother this and he said so was I. <laughs>